In this example, we're going to use trig substitution to integrate this. And the reason we know to use trig substitution, other than the fact that it's in this unit, is that we notice this square root of x squared and a constant being either added or subtracted. Now it turns out if you're clever, you can actually use u substitution to integrate this one. And I'll leave that to you to try on your own. The answer may come out looking different than the one we're going to come up with, but you can use u substitution. However, since we're in the unit practicing trig substitution, I'll illustrate trig substitution with this example, although it's easier with u substitution. So we're going to focus on that square root of x squared minus 16, and we're going to think about what substitution to use in order to make that simplify. So we want to pick the right x that will apply the right Pythagorean identity. x is going to either be sine or tangent or secant. If it's sine of theta, then we'll have sine squared minus 1, which doesn't simplify to cosine squared, according to the Pythagorean identity. If we made it tangent, we'd have tangent squared minus something, which also doesn't simplify. So we should make it secant, because secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared. So it's important to remember those Pythagorean identities and have them ready to go so that you can compare your form to that one. So we're going to let x equal 4 secant theta, and the 4 is so that it will simplify with the 16 in that square root. So dx will be the derivative of this, 4 times secant theta tangent theta d theta, and then the square root of x squared minus 16 we could work out the algebra every single time, but it turns out we already know this is going to turn into 4 times the tangent of theta. So if our x is sine, the square root will be cosine. If our x is tangent, the square root will be secant. If our x is secant, the square root will be tangent like it is in this example. So that's going to be consistent from one to the next, and once we've done a couple of these, there's no need to redo the algebra every time because it gets pretty repetitive. So now we can start replacing pieces. In the integral, x gets replaced with 4 secant theta. The square root gets replaced with 4 tangent theta. And dx gets replaced with 4 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Now notice what happens. Two of these 4s cancel each other, and then the tangents cancel each other as well. So we're left with 4 secant squared theta d theta. Now thankfully this one is a really easy integral to work out. There's no need to do a u substitution or any other type of integration. It's just directly one that we know that the integral of secant squared is the tangent of theta. That's one that we memorized very early on. So the answer is 4 tangent theta. That's the answer to this integral in terms of theta but we want to rewrite this in terms of x. So we need to go looking through our list of known information or connections between x and theta to find what we can replace tangent theta with. And notice we find right here that the square root of x squared minus 16 happens to equal 4 tangent theta. So we can replace the whole thing 4 tangent theta with the square root of x squared minus 16. If, for instance, our answer was just tangent theta, we would replace this with the square root of x squared minus 16 divided by 4. We could solve this for tangent theta, for instance. So this one was a little bit easier than the last one, largely because after substituting, this integral was much easier to do, and then this substitution back in terms of x was also much easier to do. So the difficulty of these problems really varies based on how complicated the integral is once you've substituted and then how complicated the back substitution is. But if you can handle all those pieces, you can do a full problem like this. We'll do a couple more examples and then I'll also include some examples for you to try on your own.